All right, <clears throat> today I'm gonna do a, a valve cleaning on a 2014 Escape EcoBoost. The car has um, a little over 60,000 miles. Ford has done one intake service at about 40,000 miles on the car, but it's starting to sputter and I've replaced the coil packs. Um, I've put a new air filter in it and um, I've put um, new spark plugs in it so I'm hoping this will um, this will fix the the hesitation problem it's got no no check engine light and um, so the only other thing I can think of is um, is the the carbon problem on the back of the valves so hopefully I'll be able to take you through this and um, and, and see if you can have um, some the same results if um, if I do get it fixed all right, right now I'm going to pull off the, the battery cover. Always make sure you pull off the battery cover because the, um, the throttle body has a, um, an ice breaking mode on it that um, will cut your fingers off according to, to Ford if, um, if you get them stuck in between the blade and the housing. So always make sure you, if you do any kind of intake work, with these modern um, electronic throttle bodies, take the battery cable off and um, and un unplug the throttle body so you don't um, cut your fingers off. I'll take this cover off. And right here is where I'm going to be working. Um, I'm going to take this intake off right here and, um, and see how bad the carbon is behind it. I've already got the torque specs, how to put it back on. They also say that you can reuse the, um, the O-rings if they're still intact. So, wish me luck. I've already pulled some clips off. Looks doesn't look like there's too much stuff in the way. Yeah, this is my first time pulling this apart myself, so it's probably going to be some some teething about as far as getting all this stuff off of here. Looks like there's a I don't know if you can see it, but there's one clamp down there that's holding the throttle body on. Made sure the engine was a little warm. I'm hoping that by the time I get I get this off, it'll um aid in getting the the carbon off of the back of the valves because um the heat tends to soften up the carbon a little bit. See this, but I'm trying to get that that off right there. That hose clamp. I don't know if you can see it, but up under up underneath the intake, it's hard to see, but up underneath there. Is um is where the plug goes to the throttle body. I'm hoping I can um I can 
get the um, the intake loose so I can get to that plug easier without m messing the plug up. I don't want to mess up that plug. Alright. Alright. The nerve wracking part, cracking loose the the intake bolts. Um, I always like le using a um, extension that has a lock on it so you don't drop um, your sockets down in the engine bay anywhere. I like cracking the bolts loose just a little bit at a time. All right. Well, I got them loose, so um, I'll get back with you whenever I, I get ready to, to crack the case loose. And the other good thing about these escapes is um, right here on the cowl is a perfect spot to put all your stuff and there's a nice lip so there shouldn't be any reason why you should um, lose any nuts or bolts doing any kind of a project under, under the hood of one of these. Yep, the bolts are nice and hot. So that means the carbon hopefully should be nice and um, nice and soft by the time I get this apart. You can find on the internet pretty easy um, the torque specifications to put this back on and the um, and the sequence to put it back on. You'll need a you'll need a um, an inch pound torque wrench to put this back on. Get yourself a good powerful magnet so you don't drop bolts. And there's two bolts in the corner, in the corners of the intake, so make sure you don't forget those. And there's really good access to um, to the center one. You go right straight through the intake. covering up bolts. Looks like once you once you crack them all loose, it loosens up pretty easy. So 
hopefully it should come right out but just don't forget about your um your plug going to your um your throttle body and also um make sure you loosen up um your hose clamp going to your, your throttle body at the base as well all right i'm gonna try to gingerly take this hose off of this intake I need to loosen it up some more pretty fairly loose 60,000 miles this hose is probably on here pretty pretty good I'll get back with you whenever I get this hose off. Still haven't gotten the hose off yet, but if you can see this plug right here, it looks like it's going to be in the way of trying to get the intake off. Make sure you unplug this um, this plug right here as well. After working this um, for a little bit, I've noticed that there are quite a few hidden plugs here and there throughout so I'm gonna make sure like this plug right here it goes up underneath I'm gonna make sure that I take a picture of it a couple of pictures so I remember where it was at I'm going to end up having to just unplug absolutely everything I can get to so I can get this um, intake off properly. And there's also a, um, looks like there's a vacuum line that goes to the, the throttle body up underneath. It's got a little, if there's a little green clip on it, probably going to have to try and and get that off before I can pull the intake out. That lower hose is being a being a bear trying to get off, but I'll eventually get it off. This little clip was kind of a bear to take off. It's like it's got a, a double safety on it. Um it's right under the intake. Um looks like you you pull down the green piece right here to kind of um unlock it. It's got like a double lock and then you gotta push down on this white one really really hard to disengage the um the vacuum line all right now that i've finally got all these out of the way get them up and now i'm still having a problem with getting the, the lower intake hose off so See here in a second if I if I can finally get this thing pulled off. Oh, and there's also I don't know if you can see it. There's two plugs just going into the back of the intake. They're not plugged to anything. They're just held in with um with these little clips. So just um take these off. You don't you shouldn't have to unplug them. All right, moment of truth seems like if you um if you just pull the um if you um unscrew the bottom intake hose um as far as you can get it and get everything unplugged just kind of twist it around a little bit and it should come off i got another plug right here going to the throttle body try to get this off without
breaking anything. Get back to you in a, a second. This last plug that's connected to the throttle body. Um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit different to unplug it. Um, you got to pull the little red, there's a little red piece right here. You have to plug out, you have to pull out, and then I just took a little flat head and um, hit the back side of it. But if you try to um, just pull the red piece out and pull the plug out, it's not going to come out. So um, be really careful with that one. Now, moment of truth. Uh, here's the intake. It smells like oil. The O-rings, O-rings are still good on it. Check out the throttle body. Let's go real slow. Like I said, if you did this with it connected to the car, which you can't because you can't get up underneath it, um, there's a chance that it could um, cut your fingers off with that electric motor in there. Carbon doesn't look too bad. I'll probably still hit it with some um, with some seafoam spray, but um. I'll get back with you in a second to see how bad the back of these valves are. I finally get the intake off. I don't know if you can see. I'll try to get a good view of it. But you can tell, they got some pretty good carbon deposits. That one's pretty that one's pretty good. Another pretty good glob. Another good glob. So we'll see how um how well I can clean this up. Yeah, I definitely suggest doing this on a um on a hot engine because this carbon is just it's just coming right off. It's flaking right off with hardly any effort. So if you can um if you can stand the heat, definitely take um as you can tell the carbon, I don't know if you can tell very well, but the carbon's just coming right off because the engine the engine's still nice and warm. The carbon's really, really soft still. Alright, I am back after doing lots of scraping. Check out, um, let me see if I can get a good representation of how big this is. That's a YouTube, that's a, um, um, that's one of my batteries I use for my, for my GoPro. And right there, I don't know if you can see it, is a piece of carbon that's, that flew out of the, um, off of one of the, one of the ports. Um, if I could give you one piece of advice, don't spray a bunch of um, sea foam or anything down there. Let it stay nice and dry and hot because the runners, I don't know if you can tell, the runners are so far down there that it's really, really difficult to get anything out, especially if you've, sp if you've sprayed a bunch of... Um, um, carbon cleaner or anything in there to, to get them clean it's going to be really hard to blow it back out with the with the air nozzle i'll show you i'll show you real quick how um how deep they actually are all the way to the bottom of the valve where my finger is till the tip of the flashlight that's a solid i don't know like about seven inches or so all the way down to the um to the valves I've still got a little bit more scraping I'm, I want to do, and I'm going to spray some, um, some, um, probably some some sea foam down in it after after I'm done. Hopefully, I can um, you know um, get it cleaned up you know well enough to um, to get the rest of the carbon off of it. 
Um, I hope this helps a little bit. Um, and oh, and also, I almost forgot, there's another vacuum line in the very, very back of the, um, uh, of the intake. That's what it looks like right there. Um, it's just a push pin. You push it down. It's in the very back of the intake whenever you're taking it off. I'm sorry this is kind of out of order, but um, if you watch the whole video first before you, um, you do it, I mean, this is, I don't even think this has taken me more than about an hour and a half or two to get the intake off and get to the carbon. But um, if you want to make your life a lot, lot easier, go and drive the car around, drive it around town a little bit. Um, this is an Escape. This is a 2014 Escape 2-liter EcoBoost. Um, get it nice and hot. There's nothing on the intake that gets so hot that should burn, burn you really, really bad. Um, and the carbon will just flake right off. And, um, and what I did was, I just after I flaked the carbon off, I took my little, my little, my little blow tool right here, blew the carbon right out of it. Um, hopefully, when it, um, uh, I'll do the video um, after I get it back together, and um, I get it cranked back up, and um, I'll show you the mileage on the car, so you can see that the car has actually got you know over 60,000 miles. It's like 61, 62,000, I believe. I hope this helps some of you out to show you that you can do this with really simple hand tools and not have to worry about taking it to Ford because Ford will not fix this. Um, they're, they're waiting for your warranty to run out um, and then it's going to be on you. So take a little bit of time, clean the carbon off the back of the valves and, um, and, and, and save you some money. All right. This is as this is as far as I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take these valves. As you can tell, they look a whole lot better than what they did. Sorry for the shaky camera. I've only got a, a GoPro. <clears throat> Trying to get make sure you can get some good light where you can see inside another one I had to just take one of the thinnest screwdrivers that I had and um, and gently go in there and um, and scrape as much as I can I'm still going to um, um, put some um, put some cleaner in it um, I got this stuff it's like this, um, I was going to use sea foam, but my brother suggested that I use this, um, this right here. This, um, AC Delco upper engine fuel injector cleaner. I would not suggest using very much. I'm just going to put like a little bit in each one. And, um, by the time I get it all back together and cranked up, it should break loose the rest of the carbon, um, according to Ford. Um, if you use too much of this stuff, you can drown out the bearings and your turbocharger, um, void the warranty and all that stuff. So I'm doing the, the least invasive amount of work as I can. And, um, and I hope this, um, like I said, I, ho I hope this helps you guys out who, um, who've had um, misfire problems. Um, it, it'll show up as um, an intermediate misfire. Um, you won't really pull a code. But the um the, you know but they'll say it forward oh well it, you know unless it pulls a check engine light we're not going to go in there and fix it so that's the problem it, it won't pull a check engine light until probably well after the warranty and it's actually done damage to the engine because it's been misfiring for you know fifty sixty thousand miles so um, um good luck and like, like I said hopefully this will, will help some of you guys out all right. What I'm doing now is I'm pouring, pouring maybe about a, a quarter, a quarter of a cap full, maybe even less, of this upper cylinder cleaner into um, into each cylinder. I'm pouring very just a little bit, hardly any into it.
And what I'm going to do after this is I'm going to blow it out with my, um, with my air wand so it will coat everything on the inside of the cylinder really well and it won't it won't be overloaded with um with cleaner and it's still nice and warm the engine's still hot to the touch so hopefully this will um help break up that last little bit of carbon that I couldn't really get to because it's so the runners are so deep you can't get a pick in there to get behind them unless you have like a you know a specialty pick that's like seven or eight inches long that can get behind the um, um, get behind the valves. So all I'm gonna do is gonna sp spray it out so it should should blow the liquid all over the valves. And that's it.